Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. I'm Pastor David Rose now. I thank the Lord that you're committing your time to spending with me here in God's Word. God bless our brief but very valuable time in this precious Word. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity but I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please follow as I offer the prayer of the day. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Word of God that is the foundation of our message on this Pentecost is the Old Testament lesson recorded in Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, Can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of God. I'll offer a short prayer for the Lord to help focus our hearts and our minds on what good he has for us in this word. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word, ere pure, retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. Amen. 
Last week, archaeologists were doing a routine survey along the west bank of the Nile River in Egypt. As many discoveries are, they accidentally discovered more than 250 tombs cut out of a long stretch of mountainous rock. From some of the inscriptions, they were able to estimate that those tombs had been in use from about 2200 BC, that's more than 4,000 years ago, up to about the time of Cleopatra, about 30 BC. And that puts some of the bones that they found in those tombs from people who lived about the same time as Abraham and then Isaac and Jacob. Some of those bones would have been from the time Israel moved to Egypt to stay alive during a famine. Some of those bones would have been from the time during Israel's 400 years of slavery in Egypt. And some of those bones would have been from the people who saw some of the awesome displays of God's power when he led Israel out of Egypt. If those bones could talk, could you imagine if one of those archaeologists whispered to the bones and they all started to come together, all of them started to come together and then also started to gain flesh on those bones and become living, breathing people again with incredible stories to tell? Ezekiel could tell us, I don't need to imagine. I saw it happen. And not with a few bones here and there in some old tombs. I saw it happen to an entire valley filled with very dry and very dead human bones. What did God want to teach Ezekiel using this fascinating picture? What did God want to teach Israel, his people then, and spiritual Israel, his people now? God bless us as we hear the word of the Lord. And as he did in that valley, as he did in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit will breathe a refreshing, renewing, new life, new hope giving breath to dry bones like us. God sent Ezekiel to preach during a dark and hopeless time for Israel, but it didn't look like that to start with. The market was doing fine and they enjoyed a period of relative peace. But Israel was in terrible shape spiritually. They said they were the people of God, but you wouldn't, known, you wouldn't have known that by the way they lived. By this time, God had already taught Israel a deadly lesson by allowing an enemy nation to destroy the northern kingdom of Israel because they refused to repent of their sins and live as God told them to live. And God told the remnant of Israel in the southern kingdom, turn away from your sins, or I'll do the same thing to you. But false prophets were preaching the fake news the people wanted to hear. Instead of condemning actions that God called sin, they told the people to relax, carry on. God won't destroy Jerusalem. It's the city of his servant, King David. God won't destroy his glorious temple in it. And God will not destroy all of you. And that sounded a lot better than Ezekiel, who told them what God told him to say. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? But they didn't think they were dying. They thought they were living the life. But it was not life as a child of God, with pure hearts and pure worship and pure love, for God first, others second, and themselves last. They were slowly but surely drying up spiritually. And as God warned, he allowed an enemy nation to destroy the city, to destroy the temple, and to carry the people who survived into a 70-year exile in a foreign land. 
As they look back at the destruction of all they never thought God would actually do, they began to realize how angry God was at sin and specifically at their sin. They began to despair that there could ever be any hope that God would be able to forgive them for all they had done for so long and that God would ever be able to or want to call them his people again. They were like dead bones in a valley, not able to do anything but lie in the scorching heat of the sun and stay dead. To show them the depths of his love, to give them hope, and to be faithful to his promise to send the Savior who would be born of a remnant of Israel, God had Ezekiel walk back and forth among the bones that filled that valley. What do you think, Ezekiel? Can these bones live? The obvious answer is no. But Ezekiel also knew that if God is the one asking, even making dead bones live could be possible. And that if God did, it wouldn't be because the bones had done anything to deserve it. In every generation of the 2,700 years since that day in the valley, the devil has worked in the same way, to numb people to the seriousness of sin, to work to, for people to accept things that God says are unacceptable, and to not see the danger of ignoring God's word. The devil, the devil is the first author of fake news. Don't worry about that thing that you're doing that you know you probably shouldn't be doing. God can't expect you to get everything right. Stop letting your conscience bother you for keep doing this and keep doing that. It's just not realistic to live in every way as God asks you to live. The devil does not want you to hear God's word. He doesn't want you to believe God's word. He doesn't want you to live according to God's word. Because he can't stand the love, the compassion, the understanding, the kindness, the forgiveness, the thinking more of others than we do of ourselves that comes from knowing the compassion and the grace and the mercy of the God who loved us more than himself. We, without his love and forgiveness, are dry bones that can only lie in the scorching heat of the consequences of our sin. Can dead bones like us live? Not on our own. Never on our own. God told Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. And what a new life it is. There was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. That's the power of God's word. That's the power of God's grace. The devil does not want you to have the hope and joy like that. To know that what was once dead, he can make alive again. The what was hopeless can be filled with hope if God is the one giving it. But we won't have any of this on our own power. No, the amazing grace and power that gave dead bones life in the first place is the same amazing grace and power that sustains and strengthens our faith each time we remember the blessings of our baptism. Each time we receive the assurance 
that our sins are forgiven in the body and blood of Christ. And each time we hear and each time we read and take to heart his word. At this moment, there is someone whose bones are drier than they think. Maybe they've been away from God's word. Maybe they've never heard what God can do. Maybe they're convinced that some things are beyond the Lord's forgiveness. Maybe they've looked inward for too long and feel unworthy of this kind of love and grace and mercy. Maybe you can be the one to tell them they're right. There's not a part of God's love or grace or mercy or forgiveness for all of my sins that I have ever deserved. And instead of looking down in a valley filled with bones, you can tell them about the Lord who walked back and forth among them, who gave his life to breathe new life into a heart like yours, to give new life, new hope, new peace, new joy, and a new home with him in heaven. And that if he can breathe new life into a heart like yours, he can certainly breathe new life into theirs too. What a sight Ezekiel saw that day. What that must have sounded like as a valley full of bones came together and God breathed new life into them, a vast army of his people. What a sight when God works through his word to give new life to someone like you and me. And what a sight it will be when God opens our graves and brings us up from them to settle us in the new land of his home in heaven. What a sight when God breathes new life into one more and one more through his spirit, through faith in his son, and by using people like you and me to tell them about it. Dear Christian, the Spirit gives dry bones life. They just need to hear the word of the Lord. We can be the one who speaks it. What a sight that will be. A vast army of God's people with an incredible story to tell of what he has done for us. Amen. I'm going to offer a special prayer, and at the end, I'm going to invite you to please join together with me so that we can say the Lord's Prayer together. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks for giving dry bones like us new life and new hope by grace and through faith in your Son, our Savior Jesus. Keep our faith alive by keeping us connected to you in word and sacraments. Fan into flames the gift of faith you've given us so that we might be amazed anew at your power and authority and the grace and the mercy and the love that you show us day by day. Please give us opportunity and then courage to share this good news with others so that they too might be amazed by who you are and what you've done for them. Grow your church through the power of your word, dear Lord, one by one, so that many more might know the peace and the joy that are possible, no matter what may be happening in their lives and in the world around them. Please guide all leaders to do what is right and what is God-pleasing. Please bless and protect all who are working to care for others and to provide for public safety and freedom in our communities and in our country and in our world. We ask these and all things in Jesus' name, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. This is an incredible brief moment out of our week to spend together here in God's word. I don't know exactly what's going on in your life, but I know some things because of the world that we live in and because of the sinful nature that we're plagued with. And that is that the devil is always going to be working to dry up our bones and to try to take away the hope we have. Remember, he's the father of lies. And let every else be a liar and let every word of God be true because it is. I pray that this might be a strength and an encouragement for your day and for your week to know that your God is the God who breathes life into dry bones like us and gives us new life, new hope, new peace, and new joy. And the devil can't take that away, not when we are in the Lord. God be with you, dear Christian, and I pray that you might share this with somebody that really needs to hear this incredible news. God will work through his word and do amazing things. Look, he just showed us what he can do. And look at you and me. We are living proof of the miracles that God can do. God bless your day today. God bless your week. And Lord willing, I'll see you real soon. <laughs>